Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as you can see by the title, a um, little bit unusual. Speedway and making a murder. Okay, let me start, first of all, with this. Speedway. I've got a video of a certain rider going around the Berwick track at great speed. And uh, he very kindly put a GoPro on his helmet, which you can see in the silhouette. And so I'm going to share that with you now. I'm going to make sure that I share not just the video, but also the sound. And let's pop this up and have a look at this one. Let's move me out of the way. Here we go. This was at a Berwick practice session. And as you, as you could see there, amazingly, in order to continually go left around the track, most of the time it is, the bike is either pointing straight ahead or to the right. Um, let's just move on to our next clip that I wanted to share, share with you. And uh, let's get that one up. There we go. Okay, that's ready to go. Let's just, uh, once again, click on the right buttons, share screen, share sound, good. That was um, Berwick rider Ricky Ashworth, who's also obviously famous for having ridden for Sheffield. Sheffield Tigers. But here we go with the, this was February, 2019. I've got it set at the bit that we want to watch. Here we go. A remarkable story. Well, that's an uplifting story. Yeah, uplifting that, a, sp a sports star who's involved in a really nasty accident yeah. and a, a sort of a road to recovery. To it, a it's a story of redemption and, and really shows how tough speedway riders and athletes are, what they have to put up with going around the track at 70 miles an hour, no brakes, getting round bumper to bumper, wheel to wheel racing. This is the story of Ricky Ashworth. Anyone in the speedway world will have heard of him. He rode for Great Britain. He was a former British champion. He'd endured crashes before and got back on the bike, but in 2013, he was left in a coma for three months. His family obviously feared the worst. But his comeback over the last six years has been nothing short of remarkable. It's defied what the family and indeed doctors ever believed was possible. And recently, he's been back on a bike at the Manchester Velodrome, the National Cycling Centre. I went with him. Let's have a look. There have been many heroic moments at the National Cycling Centre, but few can match the emotion and significance of Ricky Ashworth's visit here. A decade ago, Ricky was one of the country's best speedway riders, Premier League champion and riding for the British team. Like others at the top, he was riding on the edge and seemingly invincible, undeterred by pile-ups like this one in 2008. But after another crash, five years later, Ricky wasn't so lucky. He spent three months in a coma before finally his family's prayers were answered and he awoke, but the toughest journey of his life was about to begin. Looking cool, Rick. <laughs> his sister filmed the journey that followed as Ricky defied the odds and medical prognosis. 
Can you wave? Brilliant. Look at that balance. Ricky Ashworth, eh? And then this year, what many thought impossible, the chance for Ricky to get back on a bike. To begin with, a tandem cycle, but a chance to feel the wheels turning beneath him once more. It's amazing, it absolutely is, to be here every week. It's so good to be sitting out there. What's a bike? Oh, he's a biker. Yeah. It's good to be back on a bike here. I didn't think he'd be able to do it, to tell the truth. I thought there'd be no way. It's like uh, when you first let your child go on a, on a push bike with no stabilizers on for the very first time, you're a bit nervous. It is still a huge effort for Ricky to coordinate his brain and muscles to just get onto the bike, let alone soon be pedaling. Ricky can't remember anything about the crash, just the wobble before, and then nothing for three months. And yet here on the track where world championships have been decided, Ricky won his battle. Back to the feel of racing. Passing opponents in wheel-to-wheel -wheel manoeuvres around the extreme bank curves of the velodrome. And on bikes with no brakes, just like in Speedway. Set by set, it's been a long road. Just to get here, you know, still a long way to go. This beach is terrible, but other than that, it's just fantastic. I really can't believe it. It's so good. And of course, being Ricky, he's not satisfied with being a passenger. His next aim is to ride solo around the velodrome, even though his dad says, oh, oh no, hold on, hold on. But you wouldn't argue and doubt Ricky, would you, and his ambition. And then next month, there'll be some sort of benevolent uh, charity fundraising lap of honour at a speedway track, probably in Leicester, they're thinking, with Ricky on a bike, albeit a, a tandem or a, a push bike at least. And, but because of his story, partly because of his story, British Cycling have now set up these hubs around the country where people may be recovering from brain injuries or with learning difficulties can get on a bike. Whereas in the past, it's been more for those people with physical challenges that have been involved, going to the Paralympics, etc. And now there are these hubs to help people like Ricky, to give them that experience, to rehabilitate them through sport and through that it's experience of flying inspiring. around the velodrome. Very inspiring. Excellent. Incredible. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mike. Let's see. Time. Quite uh, moving, isn't it? Quite moving watching uh, Ricky go through that. Um, next thing I want to share with you, um, I uh, I post regularly in the Speedway Friends Speedway Friends uh, Facebook page. I will leave the link below for anybody that is not a member. And they did a series of where are they now, and of course. Ricky was one of those. Let's get that popped up for you. Yes, here we go. Okay, just bear with me while I quickly share the screen. Where are they now? So as I say, this is in the... Um, Speedway Friends Group, Where Are They Now? Ricky Ashworth. And this, an excellent article by Carl Fiala. Where Are They Now? Issue number 368, Ricky Ashworth. Ricky Ashworth, uh, date of birth, 17th August 1982, Salford, Lancashire. Speed, uh, Speedway teams ridden for Sheffield, Poole, Peterborough, and Berwick. Um, actually, can I just simply, simply, simply say, where are they now? You will find out at 8 o'clock this evening when Ricky, along with his teammates Seb Olden and Lee Complin, uh, three total Berwick legends, are joining me for a chat. But um, his last professional race um, at Scunthorpe, 2nd of August 2013. I was racing for Berwick in Premier League match. I had one heat one and then followed home David Balego for five one in my next race. I missed the gate in heat 11 and in trying to catch up, I had a wobble. The next thing I can remember is waking up in hospital. Exactly a year. Well, he was in a coma for three months and a year later in various hospitals, he was allowed to continue his recovery at home. 
Now, he now suffers from the condition called ataxia, which affects balance and speech. It seems that the shock of landing on the track went up his spine into the base of the brain, and that's what's caused the damage. To race again would be fantastic, but as hard as it is, I have to accept that my racing career is now over. Um, what have you been doing since you retired? <laughs> Trying to get back into shape? Um, well, there's something else I want to get onto shortly, but anyway, I'm Rocky, he's Mickey. He even dresses like him. Every morning we work out various exercises, including boxing, sit-ups, squats, press-ups, sometimes just st standing, trying to fasten my shoelaces. He has never once given up on me and has pushed me further than any physio. People who see me say they can see all sorts of improvements, especially in my speech, speech and walking. There have been funny moments, like when he was helping me into the bath and has fallen in fully clothed, or when he unknowingly showered me with freezing cold water in Hotel California, our camper van. <laughs> I have had a, a tinker with things in my workshop, and my hope is that in the future, I will spend a lot of time working on the mechanical side of Speedway. Uh, obviously, he lives in Salford with his dad, Dave, stepmom, Pam, Sister Jade and boxer dog or uh, Bob. Nearby is my mum Mandy and all that side of the family. We live in the family home, which is just in the final stages of being converted so that I can have some independent living. This has been a long and difficult process, but in the end, but the end is very near. This could not have happened without all the fantastic fans who have donated to my fund, including those who attended meetings at Berwick and Scunthorpe, plus Ricky's big day. I must also mention Paul Ackroyd at the Speedway Riders Benevolent Fund and Judy Redding and Ian Hunter with assistance from Neil Machin, who administered my, my fund. Thanks, every one of you. We are working on an article for Speedway Star to let everybody know about and see what contributions have done for me and to say a massive thank you. Hobbers and interest. I used to play guitar, but I'm unable at the moment because my left hand shakes. Hopefully one day I will play again. We have to wait and see. We watch a lot of television and DVDs and Netflix is one of them. <laughs> um, mainly speedway and motorbike racing and play a lot on the Xbox. Uh, Dad and I are massive Man United fans. We won't hold that against you, Ricky. Every Thursday, we go to our regular pub. A pint of Guinness for me to see the local band Cracked Flag play. They are brilliant, include some Irish music and some jokes in their sets. The actress, Maxine Peake, often drops in. We are also looking forward to seeing our old friend's seventh son, the Barnsley Rock legends with Kevin Lee, the drummer, a real pal. Speedway, do you have any involvement with sport? Sport, we go to watch when we can, usually at Sheffield and sometimes at Berwick. Um, you know, what was it, a year and a half at Berwick, and yet uh, uh, when, once people are... Um, become legends with the uh, Berwick Riders and uh, I think Berwick is renowned as being you know, one of the friendliest um, speedway tracks in the country um, I can understand why you'd want to come to Berwick so often the Bellevue Greyhound track was good because we could park the camper van on the back straight and watch from inside we haven't been to the new Bellevue but hope to 2017, the National Speedway Stadium. It's great when fans and riders come over and say hello, and Dad is always brewing up. We always see Ian Hunter at Sheffield. His company, Sheffield Window Centre, has sponsored the Tigers for years. Ian was also my main sponsor, and it is impossible to thank them enough for all he has done for us during my racing days and since my accident. Absolute top fellow. Going forward, this is my hope to tune engines. I used to tune my own engines and was creative with designing and building frames, mud guards, etc. I would love to put some youngsters on my engines, knowing that they are set right for particular tracks. Dad, Dad might have to help with some of the manual side, but all my knowledge and ideas are buzzing about in my head. It is hard to turn your back on a sport that you love, even if you're unable to compete anymore. Looking back, I had a good career, winning some team and individual honours. Uh, yeah, well... <laughs> There's only four Berwick teams that have ever won anything in the top two flights, and uh, 
Ricky was in the last one to do that 10 years ago, along with the guests later on today. I was part of the Sheffield team that won the treble in 2002, and in 2009, I won the Premier League, League Riders Championship. There was the Premier League Pairs Championship with Josh Rorty in 2010 and the Paul Young Guns in 2006. I also appeared in five British finals, not too bad for a former motocross christened Ricky Who by Sheffield promoter Neil Machin. I am also proud to be of my fastest man in British Speedway tag, thanks to my track record at Arlerton. My time of 59.1 on October the 15th, 2010, apparently equates to an average of 54.66 miles an hour. I think somebody will equal it first before it is eventually broken. I would be the first to congratulate the new record holder. I know how fast they would have to go to break the record and the cost of such a good engine to do it. I am disappointed that I never got to ride at my local club Bellevue. I had three meetings for them spread over four seasons, but even though I beat Chris Harris twice at Coventry, the Aces management preferred to bring Lee Lallam from Ipswich instead of giving a local lad a chance. Lee did okay, but I would have walked to Bellevue to put on that Aces race jacket. Possibly they had never forgiven me for upsetting Jason Crump in a vital match at Peterborough in 2004. I made the start in our race and went for it. It was a great feeling to beat that year's world champion. I enjoyed our next race, even though he beat me. It was great watching him from behind, turning himself inside out to hold me back. He didn't shake hands with me after the race. I don't think he liked me much because he once threw a punch at me at Bellevue. <laughs> Along with Jason Lyons and Greg Hangar, Billy Hamill was a big hero of mine. I was beating him once and I thought, I'm in front of Billy Hamill. He did pass me, but I got my revenge at Sheffield the following season. He always shook my hand, Billy and I are Facebook friends, and he has invited me to America when I get fit enough. Great memories. And there are plenty more. And you can see why it's so hard for so many sportsmen to give up. Are you on Facebook? Yes, I'm on Facebook. When people message me, it is me that replies. However, I get a lot of friend requests and messages to answer, so forgive me if I don't answer straight away. A big thank you for Dave Beresford for conducting this interview with Ricky Ashworth. And there you go, our very own Mythman, one of the 450 nearly people that liked that article. Um, next up. Like I said, eight o'clock this evening, we're going to have Ricky along with Sebastian Alden and Lee Complain. Um, let's see if I can share this one with you as well. I'd like to, I'd like to put this one up. I've got three pictures I'll share with you quickly just now. Oh, there we go. There's a picture that Marty sent me uh, that he's got on his wall at home of Ricky at uh, Shearfield in typical uh, style. Stop, share and call up a new picture in order to share that. I wanted to share this. This is quite interesting. These are the Track record holders at uh, Sheffield, it's clearly a big thing to me. Really, well, it's to all, to all speedway riders. But when you look down that list there of who have been the track record holders, you realise that uh, Doug Wire, who I'm sure at one time he rode for uh, Edinburgh, 77, 79, famous Chris Morton, Peter Collins, Sean Moran, the American. Um, very good. Peter Carr, the, uh, he also rode for, for Sheffield and also for um, Edinburgh. Hans Nielsen, uh, not a lot you can say about Hans Nielsen, probably one of the most famous speedway riders 
in World Speedway, Sean Moran again, and Chris Morton. Carl Stonehewer in 98, Sean Wilson, Sheffield Rider, Andre Compton. And then we get into Adam Shields, Australian, for the Isle of Wight. And then Sean Wilson, who for a long time was also the track record holder at Berwick. Um, and then Laramski himself, Mark Lauren, riding for Swindon. Got it down to 60 seconds. And then um, Simon Stead, um, <laughs> one of the, uh, one of the few um, Workington comics riders that I would have loved to have seen riding for Berwick. Um, Andy Moore, Simon Stead again, and uh, Chris Holder. Lowered it to 59.3 in September, of, September 2007 for the Isle of Wight. And then, obviously, Ricky Ashworth. 2009, lowered it to 59.2. 2010, 59.1. Came to Berwick two years later. And I've got one other nice photograph to share with you, which I think you'll enjoy. Yeah, just right here. Yeah, let me just do that for you now. Click on share screen. Click on that one. And there we have Beric's own Leon Flint. <laughs> Favorite speedway rider? What a surprise. Ricky Ashworth. So, um, Ricky Ashworth, incredibly resilient, very similar to Stephen Avery. You know, he was spent virtually all of his adult life locked up in prison for crimes that he was accused of and is clearly not guilty of. Um, September 2020, I got a friend request, request from Ricky Ashworth and immediately replied, you know, great to, let me just read some of, some of what, he, what he wrote to me. Let's say it was, uh, Back in uh, September of 2020, um, I put that I, uh, you know, many thanks for the friend request. I uh, hope you're continually to improve. Put that I really enjoyed that video, the, the second one that we looked at from Breakfast TV about his road to recovery. And he put, thank you. I watched you ages ago talking about Stephen Avery, <laughs> he put, I was Berwick Speedway number one when I hurt myself. And I just put Berwick legend, exclamation mark. Just watched, watching your latest YouTube video with my dad. Um, please let me know what you think. And if you're interested in joining me for a live chat about Speedway and Stephen Avery, I'd be honored. Sounds good, but my speech is terrible. I put, well, with what you've been through, your speech is incredible. And if we could set it up, it would be great to have you on. I then did a video in which I talked about uh, Ricky at the start. And uh, he just wrote back to me, thank you, pal. Amazing. And uh, he said, I've even forwarded it to uh, one of the... Um, Another legend around Berwick, not as a rider, but as a mechanic, um, track man, team manager, you name it, he's done it. Ian Ray, known as Razor. Um, then he wrote, hi Paul, I was watching your latest video on YouTube today, and I have decided to watch the whole program right from the first episode again. And I am really into it again. There is no way he is guilty. 
the whole justice system over there is guilty. And that is the problem. I just hope that when he's freed, his family are still alive. Um, are they are they still alive? And I put yes. This was back, as I say, in October 2020. Yes, Ma and Pa Avery are still alive and well. My friend in Australia, the Hod, Mark Hodinert, keeps in close contact with Alan and gets regular phone calls from Steve. And then I put, what do you think? What are your thoughts on Bartosz Sch Smarzlik, the Polish uh, world champion, winning again this year? And he, and he, he wrote back that. Thank you. That's good news. I'm really glad about him, as as in you know, Ma and Pa being alive. Well, back then, of course, Ma was still alive. Unfortunately, um, not anymore. Um, and he put that I'm really glad about him winning because he sort of reminds me of how I used to ride. And then at the bottom, but he wouldn't have beat me. Around Sheffield, where I still have the track record after 10 years, I've also raced in the States on ice. That track record is still, is still there. It's still the track record. If you check on the uh, um, Sheffield, well, let's do that. I think I've got it there somewhere. Um, where did I find it? Can you share that with you? Fifty nine point one seconds. Still fastest. Fifty nine. Ricky Ashworth. And there you go. Next meeting. Sheffield is against Wolverhampton, Thursday, June the 9th, 2020, 7.30. And there we go. Ricky Ashworth, still track record holder. Like I said, it's just, uh, it's just brilliant how we get this um, sort of cross-pollination between uh, Speedway and uh, making a murderer. I mean, I've been following the case since 2016. Clearly, um, Ricky and his dad have watched Making a Murderer. And as I say, for him to, to get in touch with me uh, with a friend request was uh, very humbling. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to having a chat with uh, Ricky and Lee and Seb Alden. And uh, we'll have some... Uh, We'll have some good laughs and i've got a i've got a nice a nice trick a uh, not sorry not trick a nice quiz question for my fellow um co-hosts uh, greg blair Mythman, aka um james black and uh, marty clyde and i and i'd be wondering i'd be interested to see if to, to find out if they know this particular question and it's this when Ricky won the Premier League Riders Championship. He beat three other riders. Darcy Ward, David Howe, one other rider. I wonder if they'll be able to tell me who that rider is. Anyway, I will, uh, I'll say cheerio. I'm not going to give any more information away. We'll catch you at uh, 8 o'clock UK time. Uh, later on this evening. Bye for now.